uh, you know, I felt the need to sort of imagine what that memorial site would be. And so I, with no expectation of ever uh, winning this competition, I just decided to to go through that exercise. I think it was very cathartic for me. It was very important for me to to do that. And I came across this uh, old disused quarry in uh, South Orange, in New Jersey. And there's just something about the precise geometry of the sort of square that's excavated out, that sense of room uh, and the rubble, but also in regard to the plants and the water, that kind of sparked my imagination. And I started to sketch ideas that explored bringing those voids that initially thought would be in the Hudson River right here to the site. And that changed very much the meaning of, of how the memorial um, could be uh, experienced. And so I had this idea of coming up to the edge of these voids, as you see above me, but also creating these subterranean spaces where you might come up behind this waterfall and find the names and, and encounter them there. Um, and so I put together this entry. It was a 30 by 40 inch board and uh, spent a couple of sleepless weeks putting it together. Um, and on it, you saw the memorial plaza being brought up to grave, these two large voids carved out of this big flat plaza and then these memorial galleries which would flank each pool. And down here you could come up to the edge of the, these pools and find the names of the victims. Um, so I sent that entry in and it was selected as one of eight finalists. And I, as a finalist, I was brought to the site, the LMC gave us access to the site, they gave us a budget. Uh, every finalist had to develop uh, models and animations and renderings uh, for um, the jury to review. We could really only begin to tell where a project was uh, based on that single image. And I remember coming down to the site, this was back in 2003, you can see the beginning of uh, you know, Tower 7 uh, under construction there. You can still see some of the old garage slabs that were underneath the towers. Um, and the slurry wall, uh, which Daniel Leapskin spoke so eloquently about, and when I encountered it in person, I. I felt very moved to see it, and there, it, there's something beautiful about that wall, and I'm glad that a portion of it is preserved in the museum. Something else that I saw that will also be preserved in the museum are these cutoff columns. These were literally the columns, that, the steel columns that held the towers up and connected to the foundations of the tower. And in the recovery effort, when all the debris was removed from the site, they were torch cut, right at grade. And what looks like a, a gray, um, sandy material here is actually the lowest basement slab. Uh, and I remember being struck by it and taking that picture and, and showing this picture at a number of presentations and somebody told me that in, this pro in that image they saw very much as this project this notion of reflecting uh, absence of showing what is gone, of making manifest and clear what has been so um, violently removed from us. And as a finalist, we were also taken to this warehouse out at um, JFK Airport, where a lot of the steel beams that were removed from the site for preservation of the museum um, are kept. And as I went through these slides this morning, uh, before this presentation, I thought that in some way, the way that we are showing the names on the memorial is very similar to what you see here. And these were uh, stars and crosses that rescue workers at the site uh, torched, cut out the souvenirs for themselves from the site. I was able to return to uh, Jimmy Awan's model shop this time as a paying customer. And we put together these models very quickly. And a lot of this process of uh, design really starts with an idea, but it, it's modified again and again and again, every step of the way. And very often it is in fabrication and developing the details. And so this idea for how the plaza might work, how the stairs are integrated, where it won't turn, there are a lot of decisions which kind of came out of this process of assembling the, the model and these renderings which I presented to the jury. And here you see the memorial galleries and this encounter with the names. And I really felt that it is at that moment when you come up to that threshold that on some level I think separates life from death that you might um, be able to begin to uh, appreciate as a visitor the, the magnitude of the destruction and, and the devastation that occurred here as you are faced with this enormous void which is echoing the size of the towers that sit here, and you're faced with the hundreds of names which surround each one of these pools. And then returning up to the plaza. I presented the, the, the renderings and the models to the jury, and 
One thing that was always very important to me and motivated me to bring the site up from 30 feet below grade up to grade so it would be continuous with the surrounding sidewalks was to really knit this back into the city, to make this a place that um, would, would be meaningful to people who come here for one visit in a lifetime, but would also work for the people who work here, who have to come down here every day and might want to eat their sandwich at lunch here. And how do you find that right balance? How do you make it a, a living part of the city and at the same time make it very respectful and appropriate for the memorial? And I think as I assembled this model, one thing that I did, I didn't put enough um, emphasis on landscape on it. I was worried that um, if I put too many models on the, uh, too many trees on the model, it would obscure the clarity of that first gesture. And what the jury said to me was like, no, actually we need you to, to emphasize that more. And so I came back to the jury and I suggested we could put more trees on the plaza so we could have this approach of just throwing more trees on, or what I call it, the abacus like bands, which was this idea of bringing paving bands right across the entire plaza and picking up significant edges, like the edge of a pool or the edge of a ramp. And then within these bands, the trees would be arrayed like beads on an abacus. There would be order in one direction and a much looser order on the other. And what was important to me when thinking of the landscape design was to really find a way to enter the design at a lower register. I didn't want to have a landscape design that was going to compete too strongly with the voids, which I thought were the primary gesture which we, we developed here. And so this kind of came in with a, it didn't overwhelm the design, but it created enough uh, life on the site to, to live in it. And so I came back to the jury with these interim renderings. I got Jimmy A1 to make another free model for me, and um, really was inspired by this idea of creating this plane that, that echo the plane of the paving below, um, a plane, a canopy of trees above, and really make sure that the trees were shaped in such a way that you would have these clear sight lines right across the site as you walked up on to the site. And you can see in these models that idea being made out of where these trees are snapped into order along one axis, but as you turn, you get this much more loose and open forest-like arrangement of trees. And a few images of the plaza as it changes throughout the season. In thinking about the landscape, we thought not just about the trees, and, um, but also about the very small scale items, like the moss that might grow between the cobbles. And this I was very much assisted um, as we developed this landscape design further with Peter Walker's office, and we were looking at different plant materials. Um, and here, and most of you are probably familiar with this, uh, JFK's um, memorial tomb at Arlington, where we're trying to sort of soften that landscape, soften the heart paving, uh, with, and this will take longer, uh, but over time I think you'll see that come in. Another element of the design that came into play, this is uh, in uh, at the end of uh, 03, was trying to tie the design to bedrock and create a space at bedrock where um, it could be a resting place for the unidentified remains. And initially I suggested that this um, sort of civilian equivalent to the tomb to the unknown soldier would be placed at the North Tower footprints because the South Tower footprint is actually bisected by the path train tracks and would prevent us from doing it. And I realized that that would um, create some, uh, I mean there was a certain amount of parochialism about it. People who loved one worked at the South Tower felt that their resting place should not be at the North Tower. Another thing I learned through this process was that the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner actually had to keep all of the um, unidentified remains under strict medical conditions. Um, and for years they've been kept on very interim basis in refrigerated trucks. And it was just not an appropriate.